Barakatha Yahawa, Barakatha Yahawa Shai, Barakatha Yahawa, Barakatha Yahawa Shai, Barakatha Yahawa, Barakatha Yahawa Shai, Barak Nawa, Barak Nawa, Barak Nawa. Call Hello Yahawa Bashem Yahawa Shai. Double honors into the apostles, double honors into the elder bishops of Connecticut. Salutations to all my fellow laborers that are doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered among all nations, all people that look like the heathen nations, the Israelite foreigners, and to the Aquaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And uh, they have a saying in the church that God is good all the time. You see that on t-shirts and hats. And... And when I see that, you know, it's almost laughable. Um, because the God of the Bible is a God of war. He's a power of war. He's great and terrible. You know, he's going to inflict terror upon he has in the past and he's going to do it even worse this time around. Let's go to uh, Exodus 15 and 3. And it reads, Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. All right. So he's completely and totally a God of war. Okay. Um, let's go to Genesis, the fifth chapter, the 35th chapter, in the fifth verse. Uh, Actually, I'm going to start at verse 1 and read down to 5. And this is Genesis 35 and 1. And it reads, And God said unto Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto, unto power that appeared unto thee. And when thou fleddest from the face of thy brother Esau, when thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother, all right, who's no longer a brother because Esau broke the, co the brotherly covenant, all right? And it says, then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. All right. So any of his servants, he's like, hey, don't bring that, that mess around, around here. All right. And it says, and let us arise and go to Bethel and I will make that altar unto God. And who, who, and who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I, I went. And they gave Jacob all the strange gods that were in the land in their hand and all the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under an oak, which was in Seshem. And they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were about them. They, they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. You see that? The Lord brought terrors upon the people that were around them. Don't sound like this loving God that's good all the time. That's a false balance. The Lord is about balance. He gives a breakdown of it in, in Ecclesiastes, you know? In Ecclesiastes, the, uh, is it? Yeah, Ecclesiastes, the fifth Yeah, third chapter. <clears throat> um, and I'm, I'm going to start at verse 1 and read, read to 8. And it reads, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. And, you know, it's funny because as Babylon is being broken down, the elect are being built up. You know, those those, uh, those stones, those lively stones, which are making up the wall, which are making up the new temple, which is a spiritual temple this time around, not a physical one. All right. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. 
a time to get and a time to lose. All right. And now Esau, he was, you know, these Idumians, they were getting their just due, you know, as what uh, what the uh, temporary or the temporal blessing that was given unto them by Isaac. And now it's a time for them. It's time for them to lose. They're losing everything right before your, your face. And the cities are going to be worse, worse than what you see on the screen, because especially here in Babylon, because this is how some of the cities around the world are going to look. Babylon is going to be a complete desert. All right. There's going to be nothing left but dust and ash. All right. There's, there's going to be no people of the of the wasteland like they have in the movies, like this wasteland you're looking at. That's going to be elsewhere. And it's going to be the jobs of all the other nations to build the world back up, to build the kingdom back up for free for 1,000 years. <clears throat> All right? Like it says, uh, verse 6 again, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. So this is the time to speak, to speak the words of the Lord, to prophesy, to uh, to proclaim and profess the coming of the kingdom of the Lord. The coming of the kingdom of the Lord is, is going to be an extremely violent act, you know, worse than any that the world has ever seen. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. In a time of peace, well, that will be after this upcoming Third World's War, and the war between the war between men, and the war between men, and the uh, and and the Lord and His elect. That's where we're headed. Um, let's go to the Book of Joshua. To give it an example in the past, this is Joshua two, and I'm gonna start at uh, verse two. In a, uh, Joshua 2 and, and 2. I'm going to read to like 13. And it reads, And it was told, told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house. They come to search out all the country. And they were there to search out the country because Joshua sent them. And um, they had heard of the uh, of the power and the terror of their God. And, the, and what these people can do with that power behind them. Okay. Verse four. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, there came in unto me. But I wish them not. They were he, they, uh, whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting the gate. It was dark, and the man went out whither. And the and and the man went, I what not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them in the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the man pursued after them in the way of Jordan unto the forge. And as soon as they, they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came unto them upon the roof and said unto the men, I know Yahweh have given you the land and that your terror, that, see whose terror? Yahweh is their terror. And that your terror is fallen upon us and all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So the word had already gotten out to the people. The people were shaken up. They were afraid. Because death was coming. This terror was coming. And they knew there was nothing they could do about it. For we have heard how Yahweh dried up the water in the Red Sea for you. And when he came out of the land of Egypt, what, what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites, 
that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you ye utterly destroyed. All right. And so, you know, I won't read any further, but what happens is uh 